and welcome to a whole evening of Harry Potter. So my name's Tracy Mann from Tracy Mann Cakes and tonight I'm going to be doing some Harry Potter cake painting with you. So I'm going to be running through how to paint the new PME cookie cutter, so which has just come out this week. So we're going to run through some of the Harry Potter stuff first while everybody's getting on board and joining in um, and then you'll be able to have a look at exactly what it is we're going to be doing. Now some of you have already bought the Harry Potter cookie cutter from me already. The address is up on the screen. If you want a more direct link, actually, I should put up the other one, shouldn't I? I'll put this one up instead. You'll find it quicker. Um, if you go to letshopkatelive.co.uk, it will take you straight through to all of our products, but also through to all the Harry Potter cookie stuff. So if you want to go and have a look at everything that's coming out or has come out, then you will find it all on my website. Now, we've had a lovely big delivery from PME. This is my second delivery from them. So we already sold out all of the first stuff. So this is all the other the stuff that's come in now we've picked up a couple of new ones as well so if you are looking to stock up on the harry potter stuff it is now here so i will run through that shortly so this is a live if you've got any questions that you want to ask while we're going through the live i will of course answer them as best as i possibly can bearing in mind i'll probably be looking at the painting most of it anyway but if you do want to ask a question um then please let me know if not and i miss it i will answer it afterwards and come back to you that way so there we go right Okay, so let's get started. And let's have a little look at what has arrived. So the one that we're going to be painting tonight is the Harry Potter crest. I'm going to turn the camera down so you can see it. So this is the one we're going to be painting tonight. So this is the Harry Potter logo. Now all these cookie cutters are the same. So they come like that. So if I hold them like that, you'll see exactly what it is that you're getting. So you're getting a cookie cutter that looks like that. And this is an embosser that then goes onto your sugar paste or your cookie, depending exactly what it is that you're doing and press it into your sugar paste or your cookie. OK, so that's this is the Harry Potter crest. Now, I'm going to just say one thing about this. When I set out to paint this, because I've already done a paint on this already. Some of you will have seen some of the um, pictures around of what I've been doing. I actually printed off the wrong crest to start with because I automatically assumed there was only one, which, of course, there so is not. Uh, there is more than one. And this is the one you're going to be following. Now, due to copyright and all those other bits and pieces, I cannot put this up for you to download. You will have to go to google and find it yourself um but this is the one that you're copying okay so i'm going to hold that on there so you can see that for the moment it did take me a little while to work out which one it was because there's some ones that have got hogwarts written over the top and there's all sorts of different backgrounds but you are looking specifically for this one on a white background when you go online you will see them on a black background as well you can paint it on a black background no problem at all but I've chosen to do this on a white background now if you look at the packaging I've got a funny feeling they've painted it on a red background which is really weird I don't know why they've done that um, but I think they've painted it on a red background I'm gonna have to just rummage through my box for a second and see where it is. No, that's the owl. Let me see if I can find one. Because I did look at it and thought, well, that's odd. While I'm rummaging, I will <laughs> I will go through what else we've got on the Harry Potter front, just so we can go through that. Um, I'm just going to quickly read that question. Can I please ask if I paint with cocoa butter on fondant on the cookie? Can I place the cookie in a heat sealed bag? Or will the paint be damaged? No, the paint will be fine as long as it's dry. There we go. Answer that question. Done. Right. <laughs> let's keep going. OK, so let's have a look at the Harry Potter cookie cutters that have come out. So these are licensed Harry Potter stuff that's come in from PME. Um, oh, yeah, I think the example we were sent was in red, but it's not on the packaging. So that's the crest. That's the one we've just talked about there. Right. I'm going to run through them quickly with you. We'll look at them under the camera. It's probably a little bit easier. This is platform at nine and three quarters. So that's one of the cookie cutters there. Again, the same principle as this one. It's a separate cut around the outside edge and then an embosser to go over the top. So once I've run through this crest tonight, you will see exactly what it is that you need to do in terms of printing. We've got Hogwarts. Now, Hogwarts, um, I'm going to do this one as another live. I'm going to let you know when that comes. Um, and we're going to do it as Hogwarts at Christmas. So we're going to do um, snow and bits and pieces on there so that you um, can see how that works. So that's Hogwarts there. They are quite big, these cookie cutters. 
uh harry potter so that's the harry potter logo again you can press that into the side of a cake or you can make a biscuit i think the idea behind this is that you can use them in lots of different ways they are not just for um cookies even though they are described as cookie cutters you can use them for other things right, i'm just going to bring myself back onto screen just for two seconds because i need to i need to rummage because i've got a whole box of them here I keep doing these videos on Instagram of me unpacking my boxes because apparently that's a very trendy thing to do. So I'm not sure whether it is or not. But anyway, uh, that's that. So there we go. That's the that's Ron and Hermione. That's quite a big one, actually. So I thought I'd bring that up on there so you can see. OK, I quite fancy painting those as well, actually. That may also be another live. There's a very high chance because of these that I may continue to do a few more lives other than this one. For some mad reason, I've decided to pick the hardest one first, which, of course, is always the way with me. I went, oh, look at the detail on that. We'll do that one. And then thought, is this a good idea? Anyway, that's where we're starting. So we're going to start with that one. We've got the train. The train is a new one. So this is the one I didn't have last week, but I now have. So this is Hogwarts Express. I wasn't going to get this one initially, um, but actually now I'm quite glad I have got it. It's got Hogwarts Express written on there and some other detail on there. Again, this is one I'm very likely to paint, I think, in the next few weeks. I'm going to see if I can get a nice picture of the train and see what that looks like. Um, so, and again, if you didn't want to do it as a Hogwarts Express, I'm sure you could rub that bit out and just make it a really nice train. So something else you could do. OK, and then well, I'm coming back again because I've got to have another rummage Ooh, impression mat. OK, so there is also this. This is an impression mat. So what that means is that you would roll out your sugar paste or your fondant, whatever you want to call it, and you would press this into that mat. And then what it will mean is that it will then imprint this pattern on there. So the pattern on here we've got is the Harry Potter glasses. We've also got a wand. We've got the, oh, I've got to remember, the Deathly Hallows. So I keep calling it the Dark Mark. It's not, it's the Deathly Hallows, the little triangle. Um, and then we've got the lightning bolt as well and some stars. So there are quite a lot of things on there. If you look at the back of the packaging, it gives you the indication as well that you can kind of wrap it around a cake or you can do, go that way, Tracy, or you can do cupcakes. So you've got either all there. It doesn't really matter whatever it is that you fancy with doing that. It's quite a nice size as well. It's six inches by six inches. So most cakes are sort of four, five, six. So you will be able to sort of stamp that down and wrap it round. So I think that's quite a good one, that one. Um, we've got Hedwig. What did I do with him? I put him in my box. We'll open the box with Hedwig on it. I'm sure I had him out here somewhere, but we'll open another box. <laughs> we've got Hedwig as well. Again, we didn't have Hedwig last week. But we have now. So we've got Hedwig as well. There we go. Ooh. Let's put that box there. Right, that's Hedwig. Let's put him under the camera so you can see him a little bit better. He's got a little Harry Potter note in his hand, in his beak, not his hand. Um, so there's a owl there as well that you can use. So that's Hedwig. Um, he isn't. He's about the same size as the train. The crest itself is actually quite big. Although if you line it up next to the owl, I suppose because it's very wide, maybe that's why that looks so big. That one. It is quite a a large sort of. Um, cookie cutter it looks like a large cookie cutter they're certainly bigger than the ones i normally do the ones i normally do are more like sort of seven centimeters these are more 10 11 but all the exact measurements have been put on the website so if you are looking to try and work out exactly which one it is or how big they are then do check out those measurements first because um they are um, a lot more different to the cookie cutters that I normally sell. Um, they're bigger. They're a lot, a lot bigger. So don't expect them to fit my boxes and things like that because they won't. Um, you will need to scale them down a bit. So in total, there's eight different Harry Potter things that are on here. So go and have a look at them. We have got a limited supply in at the moment. They are just about available at the moment. This is my second um, delivery from PME because we put them up and they all went shoom, within about two days. Um, they are good stocking fillers. So if you are thinking you've got a Harry Potter fan out there, would like one of these for Christmas, um, they will at least be more than Christmas. So they're not Christmas themed. You will be able to use them throughout the whole year and everything. So um, you will definitely be able to use those um, going forward. There's always someone out there that's a Harry Potter fan. And I actually think these are good fun. I really do. I really rated these when I saw them. And um, that's why I've got behind them. And I am... Um, 
going to basically show you what I have done with them. So I've only done the crest at the moment, but I am going to do more. I get one, two, three, four, five, Harry Potter and that one. Just checking I've shown you them all. <laughs> Don't miss one out anywhere. Right, so we are going to be painting. We're going to be using um, one of my very small paint brushes tonight. So it's going to take a little bit longer than usual. So we're going to be using my zero paintbrush. Um, so all of my paintbrushes have got numbers on them, um, starting with zero, 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 one, two, and three. So paintbrush three is the biggest one that we have, although we have um, other ones that do different jobs. Those are the ones that we tend to use for cake painting. So I teach on my website using these paint brushes and we call out the numbers so you know which is the right brush to have in your hand. So if you are thinking of doing this particular project, you're going to need your zero and number one paintbrush. Predominantly, you're going to be using the zero paintbrush. Now, in terms of the colours themselves, let's have a little look at the setup and then we can make that a bit more visual. I'm just going to move that out of the way. Now, if you want to know how to set up the, um, if you want to know how to set up the cookie, I did a little live earlier today. So if you've missed that afterwards, go back and you'll find it on this page. And it isn't a very long live. It's about five minutes and you'll see me rolling out some sugar paste, pressing in the cookie cutter and just talking about setting it all up. So if you want to go back and watch that, that will be available for you to go back to. Right, let's take that down for the moment. So this is our setup tonight. So we've got under here, for those of you that saw me at Cake International, this was starting to become something that a lot of people had learned about. So under here, we have got a chrome food warmer. It's extremely hot because there is a tea light running under here, which is make this metal paint palette hot. So because we've made it hot, we need to make it hot because we're going to be using cocoa butter. So this is cocoa butter, it's a hard product, but when you pop it onto metal that's hot, it does melt. So that's the reason why we need that heat on here to be able to get that melted. Now we're gonna be using various dusting colors tonight. The absolute key dusting color to this is Wonder Dust Bright Gold. I haven't told Carol yet, I need to tell her. Wonder Dust Bright Gold is the key color for this. There we go, so it's made by Sugar and Crumbs. We do have it on our website, so if you do want to do this, you will need this color. This is the main color for this particular project. You're also going to need black and white. You're going to need Primrose. Um, I did actually paint it with Cerulean Blue, if you have got that, but I'm using Petal Blue tonight and red. I think I've got everything covered. I'm going to find out in a minute when I <laughs> realise I'm one missing. Um, and that's it. So that's my setup and I'm just going to pop that there to one side. I'm going to bring my board up a little bit so I can bring in what we've got to paint and then I will talk you through why and what it's going to be like. So at the moment the chances are you can see very little and it will be like that for a little while while I just put some paint down but as I start to put the paint down you're going to see the image coming forward um, and that's how we've got to work with this so if I hold this up for a moment under the screen whoop, without knocking that over can you see all the detail that's on there so all the detail is there but it just means that I have got to find my way around this and work out all the bits there so everything is there and that's how we're going to paint it, all right? So I've done this once already because you've obviously seen the pictures around and um, we're going to get started. So I'm just going to put a little bit of icing sugar under there just to make sure this is moving. Now, I did do this with sugar paste. I didn't do it with modelling paste um, because I just thought, oh, well, I'm just going to cut it out and paint it. But if you want it to stand in front of a cake, so if you want it to, if you imagine looking at a cake and it's standing at the front, you will need to do this in modelling paste. So something like Sarah see no again which you'll find on our website if you go into cake supplies you'll find it in there um, and you will be able to paint on that in exactly the same way um, as I have painted with this so I hope I've done this right because otherwise I might have something to say halfway through it but we're going to get started on this and the say please bear with me while we're doing this because as I start to paint it you will see it um, lifting. I'm going to bring this down a tiny bit further but not a lot further because the minute my hand goes underneath there the camera starts leaping about. So let's turn this around. We're starting with paintbrush zero. It's a very small brush and we're going to be using bright gold. So we're going to get that mixed to start with. So this is a luster colour 
Now, luster colours tend to require more dust than the matte colours because they just do. I don't know why, but they do. And so we're just going to mix that in to start with so that we've got some sort of paint that we can then get some reasonable coverage with. OK, so this is Wonder Dust Bright Gold. Now, because I'm looking down now, I'm not looking up particularly. Um, if there are any questions about anything, I will um, keep checking the screen every so often. But if I miss anything, then I apologise and I will come back to it. OK, so we're going to start right in the middle. So you can see it picking up and moving out as we go. There you go. You can start seeing it coming out already. So we're going to start with the centre part of this which is the H for Hogwarts, not Harry. So don't forget, this is the Hogwarts logo. So we're going to paint that in to start with. Now, I've already painted this once before and it took me um, just over an hour and a bit. But then I did actually realise halfway through that I was painting the wrong logo. I had to go back to Google and find the right one. So <laughs> I didn't help myself particularly. So... Um, maybe this time I'll get it right you'll be okay so I'm just going to go across there like so um, we're going to extend that out to this bit here so because it's embossed actually you can get the paintbrush in really easily it's not sort of too tricky to get the paintbrush into where you need to put it so although it's very detailed I would say this is the sort of thing you need to paint not under any pressure don't do it on a live like i'm trying to do <laughs> that's my first tip do it at home without cameras on you and there we go that'd be easier okay let's have a look up on the screen and see what you can see so there you go that's come through quite quickly already so you're going to see this build i'm going to put down some lots of outlines now and then you'll see it being sort of gradually infilled as we go so we've got gold on the go, so we may as well go straight down here. We're still using paintbrush zero. It is a very small and detailed paint, this. So you're better off sticking with the smaller paintbrush if you've got one. If you don't have one, we do have one on the website that you can buy on its own or as a set. So we do our paintbrushes in sets of five or individual, but you will need paintbrush zero for this particular one. There we go. Hopefully you can see what's going on. So we're going to go around this side. I'm keeping an eye on what I painted before to make sure I don't go too far off piste. OK, so it's got very good coverage, um, this particular paint. I'm a big fan of these Wonder Dusts and we've got, um, we've got four online now. We've got the regal purple we have got bright gold which is always very popular at christmas snowstorm which makes very nice glittery snow so if you're doing um, something with royal icing or a bit of white paint some snowstorm on top of it and you have a very nice glittery bit of snow at the end okay or so regal, what i say regal purple bright gold snowstorm there's one other whisper pink, I think it might be. We did have fine silver, but we've sold out of that one at the moment. So you can see it building quite quickly. There we go. Now, um, if you're going to follow this as a tutorial after I've finished, then I do suggest you do this the way I'm doing it because it is tricky in places and you do need these gold boundaries up quite quickly. Otherwise, you're going to get in one hell of a muddle. Um, because it is a little bit tricky to see in places. So this is why um, I have done it like this. And also because I've got gold on my brush, I'm not going to go and keep changing my brush around. I might as well do as much gold as I can. The nice thing about um, the luster dusts is that you only need to paint them once, which is really nice. You don't need to keep going over them repeatedly. I'm also moving this around if I need to get in a bit closer to anything. I'm not keeping it all in the same position. So always move it around as well. So if you're sort of struggling to see what's going on, just move it and see what um, you need to do. Now, the key to this, obviously, is making sure you have actually pressed down the cookie. 
uh, embosser. So before you start, have a really good look at what you've done to make sure you've got it all, because this is going to be quite tricky to make up um, if you haven't got it done right. But you can see the boundaries going on already. You can see where things are going to be. See, look, it's already coming together quite quickly. If you, there are, there is obviously a point with this where you don't have to keep going. You can stop. You don't have to keep painting it. Um, you know, you might just like it like that. I don't know. You might just want to do the gold on here and leave it at that. So you can do things slightly differently. You don't have to follow completely what I'm doing. Okay. Right. That, believe it or not, is the near enough the outside edge of this. And what we're going to do next is we're going to come right down the bottom here and we'll do the, I guess this must be the motto of Harry Potter or something, or Hogwarts, some sort of uh, complicated, maybe Latin potentially, or snake language, I don't know, something's going on down here. But um, for all you hardcore Harry Potter fans, you'll know what this is. But I'm just going to run my paintbrush straight over the top of it. So I'm not going to try and sort of paint around it. I'm just going to go straight over the top. And actually what that does is it brings out the lettering quite well. We are going to go back and paint it in, but it just helps to see exactly what it is that's written there. For when you do your coat around the corner here. Like so. So this is a bigger area. So if you want to go up a paintbrush at this point, which we could do actually, let's do that. We'll go up to paintbrush number one, purely just for speed more than anything else. Um, it can help you cover bigger areas. So because the paintbrush is a bit bigger, actually it'll help me to mix some more gold as well. So let's get some more mixed while we're here. And then you can literally Go straight over. The, the zero is excellent for detail, but if you want to get a bit of paint down, then go up to paintbrush one. And go across there. Go. You see, can see it forming quite nicely now. Across there. You are picking up quite well on the camera, actually. It's picking up a little bit better than I had hoped, so that's good. So the Harry Potter stuff is in. We are sending it out as fast as we can. Just a little comment about the post at the moment. So things are starting to slow down, which means that our normal two to four working days is being extended to about a week at the moment. Sometimes up to two weeks, depending on what your post office is like. So if you do want these for Christmas, you are going to need to do order them sooner rather than later because time is ticking on now. Um, the minute we hit Black Friday, it always goes completely insane. Last year, it took us three weeks to get our Black Friday stuff through. Um, although they were on strike last year, so maybe this year it won't be so bad. But I wouldn't like to hedge my bets, to be honest. So um, if you've definitely got your mind set on something for Christmas, then that's what you need to do. There you go. See, that's come together quite quickly, hasn't it? We can see quite clearly already what it is that we're building. So we're going to carry on with some more gold on the outside edge here. So we've got some sort of fleur de lis things going on here. And again, these are um, embossed, so I am literally just following them. I'm not making these up, they are here, I can see them. So that's good, that's a bonus, isn't it? So and because they're lifted up from the sugar paste, I'm not touching the sugar paste at all. It is up a little bit higher, so that's good too. All positive. Okay, right, let's head around there. It's got a bit of a weird sort of shape thing going on here. And again, we didn't design this. Um, whoever designed the Harry Potter crest did, so we just follow it and just see what comes out. I think that's the best way to tackle this, is just look at the little bits that you're painting 
and then hopefully the overall picture will make sense. That would be good then, wouldn't it? Okay, and round we go. You can already see how it's coming together. And we'll go round up here. Now I did put on TikTok, I think I might have even put on here as well, the stages I did it in last time when I painted this. I, I can't say that they will be exactly the same this time. <laughs> I'm always changing my mind as I go through things so you might find it's a little bit different this time but it doesn't matter do things in different orders each time but this time I decided I'm going to do all the gold first and then work it out from there Now there's quite a big area of it here, I've just got to identify it, that's the key to this. So that's coming down there, there's another bit there. And then we've got another bit there. And again, if you go wrong, luckily that you can paint over it, which is good news as well, isn't it? So you don't have to worry about uh, making any mistakes. As long as it's dry, you can paint over cocoa butter and all is not lost. There's another one in there. I knew there was another one there. I'm trying to find it. There we go. That's better. I knew it was there somewhere. Right. So let's turn that round. We'll come this side. So again, whoops. Right, I've just got a tiny bit of gold on there, but that's okay. Around we go. Quite like painting with luster colours because they cover so well so quickly. Right, hold on, there's a little bit of a, I've got to work this out here in a second, so that comes in there. You do need a picture in front of you when you do this, and preferably the right picture, <laughs> or you follow my tutorial, but just follow it very carefully because it is so highly detailed that it's quite easy to kind of slip up here. So just follow along. I think it's completely possible and actually once it's done it is amazing it is completely amazing when it's done so we will we will run with it right let's mix a little bit more paint up so don't forget if you've got any questions tonight you want to ask me about cocoa butter painting then let me know as we go I'll be more than happy to try and answer them for you as best I can while still painting at the same time, she says. Okay, a little bit there. Right. Now we're nearly at the top. I'm sure I've probably missed a few bits, but we will come back and pick those up as we go along. The idea at the moment is just to get down an outline so we can see where we are going with this because it is a little bit tricky to follow when you haven't got the gold down. You can see gold is the main colour on this, exactly what I said it was going to be. So you will need that bright gold colour or any gold, but I've used bright gold. And then there's a little bit up here. And what have we got? We're over here. Let's turn that round. Make sure I get the right bit. There's going to be a big sigh of relief in a minute that I've, <laughs> I've got all the gold down.
Right, I think that's it. That bit belongs to that bit. So I'm just backtracking, making sure I've got it. No, there's the bit there. It's in the bow. I'm sure it's not a bow, but it looks like a bow. fill that in. I can always paint over it anyway. There we go. Right, what have we got? Make sure I've got it all. Okay, I think that's it. Just checking. <laughs> yep. That side, a little bit more there. And then a little bit more on this side. Okay, right, that's it. That is the basic start, okay? Got that going. Right, let's change colour. Let's have a lie down for a moment. <laughs> okay, so we've done that bit. We've got the outline there so we can now see more where we're going because it is quite a tricky one to see online for you and also for me as well. So we now have some boundaries, lovely. And what we'll do is we'll have a look at the characters first. In fact, I've just cleaned my brush up and I still need gold. So that was a bit silly. So let's get the gold going again. So there are the four characters for the houses. So there's a lion there, there's a snake, there is a funny looking badger thing and then an eagle here. Um, and they are painted very like um, shields. So they're not particularly realistic. That's what I would describe them as. So we're gonna just go around and paint um, the lion in first. So we're just gonna take him. So again, it is all embossed. And you'll notice some parts are raised. So you just paint straight over those. Don't be put off by those. And again, you will need to keep an eye on um, a picture with this so you can pick it all up carefully. Let's turn it round. So that's his jaw there. So the lion is facing in that way and he's got his feet on the Hogwarts sign here. Just double check that bit, yeah, so that goes there. We will go back and put some other paint on him later on so he will stand out a bit more when you see him later. leg there so it all will look a bit sort of blended into the gold at the minute and not much else but he will appear later on when we put a little bit of sort of black and different colors in there so just bear with it on that one okay let's tidy him up a little bit okay all right let's change color let's do the snake next now the snake on the picture is sort of a grey colour, I think, from what I can see in the picture anyway. So I'm going to get some black, grab some white, and we're going to make up some grey. Now we're going to make up quite a light grey to start with, so he doesn't come out too dark. We don't really want any of the characters to stand out any more than the rest of them, okay? So we don't want to sit, look at the, the crest and just see the snake. We want to look at the crest as a crest, so we're not looking specifically um, to see one or the other. So I'm just going to start by doing his head. Again, it's all there for you. You've just got to follow it. Now he sort of comes around the emblem bit there in the middle. And then his sort of tail bit is here. So it's sort of split off a little bit. So keep an eye out for that. It sort of goes in a swirl. Oh, 
just check that. Okay, there's the snake. So he's in already. And then we will go across to um, this sort of badger wolf thing over this side. I'm guessing this is Hufflepuff. It is, that's what it is. A badger wolf thing. <laughs> can't be right can it <laughs> that's what it's a funny half badger half wolf thing anyway that's what it is on this side i'm sure it's one or the other really but anyway it's probably more wolf than badger i'd say maybe i don't know i don't know i'm making it up now as i go along so that's his foot there so again it's a little bit 3d in places so just work with it just don't sort of overthink it too much. I think what can happen with this shield is you can get very bogged down in the detail and actually it isn't a particularly, um, they're not particularly pretty animals, that's what I meant to say. They are very much sort of shield-like animals. They're not, they're not beautiful, but they're all right. Okay, there we go. So that's the, the badger wolf thing that we haven't decided what it is. And then actually we're gonna go back to the gold again. And we've got this uh, eagle bird probably on this side. So again, we'll paint that in. Like so. And again, there is another colour to go over the top of that. So we'll do that later on once we've got the sort of bulk of it down. wings down here a bit more paint or a bit more cocoa butter I should say my paint's gone in a bit thin if your paint starts to get quite sort of translucent um, just put some more dust in there and then hopefully that will make it a little bit better for you there we go all right so those are the four animals. So you've got two in gold and two in like a grey colour. So while we are still in that centre bit here so we can really pick it all up now colour-wise, we're going to start painting some of the backgrounds. So we're going to turn that round and we're going to mix some red to start with. So we're going to mix a little bit of red now. This is a matte colour now, so this will need less... Um, dust than the luster colours and we're just going to mix a little bit of white in there just to brighten it up a little bit okay and then we're going to go over to this part here and we're going to very carefully start to paint behind the lion so this is Gryffindor I hear you say <laughs> this is Gryffindor I think would make sense wouldn't it so we paint around there let's turn it around go inside his tail there make a blob of red there now just be careful where you're painting your red just check all right check you put everything in the right place I think that's the top of his foot there so I'm going to stop there I'm just going to grab my brush with a little bit of gold on it there I just got my paintbrush one back again just pop a little bit of gold in there okay and then we've got to go down here between his legs. This is why you need that tiny brush because it's going to be so difficult to paint without this little brush. All right, just bear that in mind. Let's turn that around again. So that backs the um the little line up and you can see it's a bit of a weird looking lion but again as i say this is a shield it's not necessarily a sort of full-on accurate animal paint um i'm just going to go into the h in the center now with the red color don't 
to Hogwarts, down there, and across there. Let's turn that round. If my brush clips anything, I've usually, because I've not turned it round, so I'm just turning round as we go. I've left the side a little bit because that's got a black line running down it, so I'm trying not to paint some aspects of this H because there's a black line to go in yet. Although I can paint over this anyway, it won't exactly matter because it's a stronger colour anyway. Turn it around. There we go. Right, so we've got the H in there. Okay. There we go. Right, so you can see that moving. Now there is a little bit of red up here. Now while we've got our red on our brush, I'm just going to paint this little bit up here. Just across like so. And then there is a bit more red kind of behind this bit here, which is a tiny bit more tricky to see, but I think what we'll do is we'll just put a little triangle in there at the moment, and then we'll come back to that later, just so we've got an idea roughly where it is. We think it's round about there, but it, it's kind of like, um, it almost looks like a bit of a cloak coming down there, really. I can't really describe it as anything else, but that's what it looks like. Um, so I think we're done with the red for the moment. Yes, we are. So I dip it into the cocoa butter and then just give it a bit of a wipe on your kitchen bowl. So dip it in, twist it until it runs back to the same colour as the cocoa butter. It should be sort of a yellowy colour because it's quite a strong colour. Just keep going with it until it's out. Because we don't want to mix red with yellow because otherwise we'll start mixing all sorts of colours. So we do definitely need to make sure it's all out. Right, let's turn that round. We'll go for the blue next. Now I'm taking a chance with this. I'm hoping this is dark enough because I originally did it with um, cerulean blue. And tonight I've gone with petal blue. So hopefully this will be okay. Just about. Might put a tiny bit of white in there actually. Okay, so we'll go down to this one here. So... Um, this is, let me think of the house here. I think this is Ravenclaw, isn't it? Is that right? I'm just trying to think. The eagle. No, Hufflepuff is the, that's that one. Yeah, no, that's right. I'm sure if anyone's out there is a massive Harry Potter fan, they're probably thinking, oh, what is she talking about? <laughs> so we're painting in the background, the blue background here behind the bird. here, across there, and down that side. Now I don't think there's any other blue on this, I think this is literally it, so we are done with the blue, so we can get rid of that, a little bit of cocoa butter, give that a bit of a twist, and get rid of it. There we go. Right, round we go again. Let's do, oh, I know which colour I'm missing. I forgot to put the green on. Right, so primrose. And we'll put a bit of white in there as well. I forgot to put my green in. We'll do that in a second. So we're going to go yellow behind this one. Okay, now the green I picked was moss green for this. Put a little bit of moss green in there, I don't need very much. Let's turn it around. So moss green to go behind Slytherin. That's what we've got, isn't it? So make sure we get all the colour out. 
grab a bit of this with a bit of white. Always put a little bit of white in just to brighten it up a little bit. You'll see me adding white to quite a lot of this stuff. And then we'll go over here and we'll just paint under his chin. Around that way. There's quite a bit of green on this bit here because it's the biggest one of the biggest bits of the emblem crest, whatever it is you want to call it. I've got to make sure I find that line at the top. There it is. So I don't end up making a mistake. I'll go over the top of the head of the snake. Down the side. There we go. And then we've got to go inside his tail. And then there's a little corner there. And then another little corner on that side. Okay, so already you can see very quickly that it's now becoming a lot, lot clearer and you can see a bit more what's going on. Right, so back to the grey. Let's turn that round here. Now up here is, well, I don't really know what this is, but it looks like some sort of, I don't know, barrel or something. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to just paint it over in grey because it does have black shading on it. But obviously with black, I can come over that and, and do that later. I can just get the basic colours down for the moment. And then we can expand it from there later. I did struggle with this bit when I first did it, but I've worked it out now. Now I actually have the right picture. <laughs> that does help, you know. Do have the right picture in front of you. <laughs> Not like I was doing. Oh, what is wrong with this? Okay. And then it goes to black and there's a little bit of grey just there. So we'll put that grey piece in there. Um, and then there's a lot more black to come from there. So... Um, already we've near enough got all the paint down on the whole thing and we're going to be looking at very shortly um, adding in the black and it's the black that really changes this dramatically that's the bit that's the key that we're looking for um, to get this logo um, more tidier than it is at the moment which is fine before we do that though we're going to just make up a little bit more dark grey and we're just going to go back into these characters that we talked about here and we're just going to add in some of the darker shading that's got to be done on here. So there's a little bit there that goes on the top of the head of this funny badgery wolf thing. And then right up underneath there, under his stomach, it gets a bit darker. And there is an embossed line there, so you will see it. So you will know where to go with that. You won't need to be going in the wrong direction of that one. You'll be fine. We'll just dab that in a bit, I think. There we go. All right. And then we've got some sort of similar grey shading with um, on the bird on this side. So again, we'll just pop that in. That's down the back of the neck of the bird and down one side a little bit under there it's not massively um specific it's very um it's not what you would normally use i guess not the normal sort of coloring scheme maybe i don't know but it is all there for you so you don't really have to to guess too hard it's there you can see it there we go and we'll go a little bit darker here for the snake, just on the outside edge here. And we will go down this side. What we'll do is blend that in a bit because it's quite strong. So I don't want anything to stand out. It's all got to be much the same. It's the black that makes this all stand out. So we'll just blend that line in a little bit. And then we'll come round here. a bit more dark grey like 
like so. And then we're going to darken it up even more because we've then got to go to the lion. And again, he has got some sort of... Now, you could do this in black, but I think black is too harsh for this. I think it really is. I think just stick to doing it in a dark grey. Because I think if you start doing this in in black, it will be too much. I think it's quite important to not let it overtake the whole thing because we are going to be doing a lot in black shortly. And then that leg there is more of a dark colour. Okay. All right. Like so. So the majority of the colour is on now. So we are now switching across to black. Um, we're going to do, let's turn that around a little bit. So let's grab some black. Mix up some paint. So there's quite an extensive amount of outlining in this. So we are using paintbrush zero for this, nothing else. Um, now, I would suggest if you're going to do this, that you put your hand down and you clamp your wrist around, uh, sorry, your hand around your wrist to stop your um, hand moving about. I find that's the easiest way to do if I've got to do like lots of fine lines and things, which is what we're going to be doing. So we're going to start in the middle with the H and we're going to just literally just put a black line down the outside edge and across the top here. And then inside here, again, I'm just copying the logo. This is not something I've made up. This is something all the way it exists, I should say. Like so. Okay, now when you've got your brush, just make sure that you've got only paint on the very tip of your brush. And then there is a little indent which you can feel as you paint. So if you go along there, your brush will actually slip quite nicely into that gap. Come down here so I'm just going to turn it a little bit and if you find the paint isn't coming off for whatever reason just put a little bit more cocoa butter on there so that it's got something else so it flows a bit better okay and then around here you might be not breathing quite so much at the moment like that. Now if you make any mistakes then obviously you can go over them with paint once it's dry but we need to let that paint dry before we'd even consider going over it all right there's no problems at the moment we're all okay as we stand. Right let's go down these lines here so we're going to come down the side of this line and again you'll feel a gap you'll feel there is a little gap there so your brush is just slipping into that little gap and coming straight down it. And again, if you make a little bit too much black in one place, we can wait for it to dry and then we'll go and paint back over it again. Let me just turn this heater off because actually, believably, I'm getting too hot. <laughs> I thought it was going to be freezing in here tonight, but actually now I'm roasting with this heater next to me. So I'll just turn that off. Let's get a bit more cocoa butter going on there. Okay, I'll go up that side. And then we'll come down this side as well. So the brush is just following the gap, all right? I'm not painting alongside it, there is a gap my brush is just slipping into that gap and painting it all right okay there we go let's pull that bit around there so i was just seeing if his foot was on that line but it is so that's okay just checking the pictures as we go Turn 
then we're going to start let's come from this side out as well because that helps us to see where those boundaries are so you can see how much difference this outlining is making it makes a huge difference I didn't breathe during that bit. <laughs> now some of these lines are a little bit thicker, but again, what I decided to do when I did this was get the paint done and then go back and make my adjustments. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to overthink this. just going to get this painted as best I can as I say this is a bit of a I'd say this is a Sunday afternoon slash evening activity you can sit and and do this it's actually when you've done it it's actually really satisfying this because you don't focus on any one area you just look at the whole thing and I think that's what's so nice about this so I've missed a bit down the bottom there um, you don't sort of look at one Bit that you didn't like the whole thing comes together which is really nice right where are we so making sure I don't get lost here so I'm just gonna thin my black down a bit And round we go. Now it does actually darken under there, but we'll come back to that in a second and I'll show you what I mean. There we go, you can see the crest now is coming, really starting to come forward. So you can start seeing some of the detail. on it starting to come out. Now it's actually black across this top bit here. When I first painted it, I did it gold and then I couldn't understand what was wrong with it and I had to go back. That's why I realized I was painting the wrong thing. <laughs> Now we're just going to put a tiny bit of white in this just to make sure it's not too jet black for the minute because I'm going to, there is a, what looks like a book I think is what you would describe this as that goes in here. I can't really describe it as anything else, it looks like an open book which I suppose if it was a school potentially it might be an open book. fits in there and then it joins the logo crusty bit down there and just at that point there okay now the dark gray color as well I'm also going to put this between these lines up here and again this is embossed you will be able to see this I'm just popping those in there. Like so. And then it gets this bit here is quite dark as well. So fill that in as well. And then it gets dark up here bit goes in there just pop that in up there these bits here are a little bit darker but we'll come back to those later on I think we'll when we've crossed that bridge right okay let me have another look and see where we're going next with this okay let's go down to the bottom we'll just make it a little bit darker again and we'll do the uh, outline of this motto so again I'm just pulling my paintbrush along here 
following the line that's already in there for me. Kind of goes around. Just trying to make sure I've got plenty of cocoa butter on there before I put my brush into that gap. and then it goes back on itself and round again like so And then we'll go back to this bit here and we'll go around this again. A tiny bit of silence while I'm just <laughs> doing my breath to get around this particular bit. Just because it's quite a long way to go. But by the time you've done all these shorter bits over here, you'll just be an expert by then. See, I'm running the brush quite quickly. I'm not sort of holding it in one place. I'm going straight round with it. And then round here. So there we go. So that bit's coming through. You can hear me holding my breath. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I'm not talking as much. Right, let's do the lettering. So with the lettering, again, it's all there. So you just take your brush and you literally follow it. So put your brush into the gap. Draco, whatever that means. even see that next bit right let me just check that letter there is that an r that is an r i nearly did that the wrong letter then that is an r that's an m that is an i N S okay mm -hmm. and then N U N Q Oh, I need a bit more cocoa butter on there, it's gone a bit. If it's not flowing, just increase the cocoa butter so it does flow, because you need it to flow for this bit. And that was the last word, right. The light shining on it, can't quite see what I'm doing. L, L, A, N, D, U, S, right, okay, nearly there. There it goes, that bit doesn't take too long, does it? Because you're just literally following, following the letters that are in there, so that's fairly, fairly straightforward. 
Right, let's have a look at the top bit. So I think this is where it really does change dramatically um, because at the moment it all looks a bit sort of woolly up the top there. But once we start doing this bit, I think this is where I went. Whoa, look at the change. So let's do this bit here because this is the fun part. So we're now going to just concentrate on just doing some um, of the shading that goes around the edge of some of this gold. And this is where I think the transformation really takes place with this. So we can come in here. So I'm following a picture, all right? So if you're thinking I'm just making this up, I'm not. I'm actually following a picture. Just tone down the black a tiny bit. Over the top. And then we put a little dark in there. You see it starting to come together now and then we're going to go over the top and then down Oh, I've missed these bits, I skipped a bit then, let me go back down here. And then... Let me just make sure I get this bit right, because there's quite a big bit of black here. Let's turn that round. sure it all joins up never oh it's mine <laughs> right Nicola Nicola is my school friend who speaks multiple languages and she is very well I don't know whether I'm to believe her or not because I know her quite well <laughs> The words on the Hogwarts motto translation, never tickle a sleeping dragon. I the thing is with Nicola, because I know her so well, I don't know whether I trust that or not. <laughs> I'm laughing now, honestly. What are you like? Right. She's probably right. I wouldn't be surprised. Sounds about right. But then also it could be a pack of lies there, Nicola, so. There we go. Right, where do we get to here? So that bit goes there. Nicola, you may say that's true, but honestly, I have a job to believe anything. <laughs> You're probably winding me up. <laughs> All right, let's put that bit in there. A bit of black there, just where it's turning in on itself.
right oh i've missed a bit of gold there right i knew there'd be a bit i'd miss somewhere like let's get some gold going so that should come round like so Tiny bit of white in there as well, it's just a tiny bit too harsh. I guess when you're doing this, try and paint in an order so that you can see it as you go up because if you start sort of painting a little bit over here a little bit over there you can see you're going to get very very lost with this very quickly and you can see i'm checking constantly what's going on because there is so much detail on here A tiny bit over there but that doesn't really matter I'm not that worried about it okay and then black under there and then you've got black in these that like glasses or something going on up here there's a little bit black just there like so right we're just going to give the black a second or two while I just get some more gold paint mixed I just want to go over a couple of bits where it's a little bit thin thicken it up a little bit so I'll just mix it with my brush and we'll swap back over to the zero brush And then we'll go through because I know I can see some bits I've missed already. So I need to go back and just double do a double take over some of it. So I'm just going to thicken up some of the gold on this side because it's a little bit thin. Needs to be a bit thicker. And then over here. not as gold as it could be but it is now it's better well, I had a little blob of black there earlier I can just paint that over now with my gold so this is by adding this sort of second layer of gold it really starts to stand out a line there as well I can see it so I'll go back and do that I've missed quite a lot on this side that must have been Nicola putting me off I think I'm right with that bit and then again if I need to if you do go in and brighten up these lines just be careful you don't go over the black lines because i'll see you'll have to redo it otherwise okay right let's go back and do the black again let's turn it around i should be i needed a break from the black for a minute because it starts to get a bit oh And then we'll go across. Do they go across here? Yeah, they do. And on this side. 
I mean, to be honest, it's near enough a mirror, mirror image. So if it's on this side, it's definitely going to be on this side. So just keep an eye on it. And then the whole thing then has a very thin line going around the gold on the outside edge. So once you've kind of done that shading part, you've then got to do a very thin black line over some of these bits here. So it sort of tidies it up a little bit. And across the top. So around here. Otherwise they just sort of disappear into the abyss here. Whereas actually what we need to do is make them very much part of the rest of this. You can see it changing again. There. Right around the other side. So there is a lot of outlining with this, but actually it's the outlining I think that makes it without the outlining, it's just not the same. And if you deeply studied everything I've done on here, it's not perfect, but it doesn't need to be because the whole thing is so detailed that your eyes are just everywhere when you're looking at it. So you're not looking at one particular blob mistake that I've made anywhere, where well, you might be, but you might not be as well. And this is such a nice, large piece of Harry Potter. I think it's just amazing. I really do. I love it minute I saw this out, I was like, right, I'm painting that. It wasn't even a consideration. It was like, I'm painting it immediately. Let's put a little bit of gold in there. And you get something that comes out like this, which isn't very often. It's just irresistible not to paint, I tell you. Right, I'm going to make that a little bit darker grey here. Just go over these bits here because they're a little bit too bright. That's better. And then we'll just go down there as well, darken that up. And then we'll go round. That bit there, so around the snake. A bit more cocoa butter needed. There we go. Not too much cocoa butter because I've blobbed it then, that's okay. So that can just be a really thin line there. It doesn't have to be a very thick line. In fact, if anything, the last thing you want to do is make it a great big chunky line around any of this. You want to keep it as fine as you can, which is why this zero brush is just crucial for this paint. Because basically, without it, you're going to struggle. I'm going to put a little tiny dot where his eye is. There. Didn't, uh, did I outline these? I didn't, but maybe I will. Let's just do, I think what we'll do is just tone it down a bit. If you're doing an outline, you don't want it to be too strong. 
just make it dark grey rather than black and then it's not as as strong as it could be much better but then you've still got a bit of an outline going on and that looking on the screen yeah not bad same for the funny wolf battery thing maybe not so for the lion I might leave him alone maybe just do the top of him oh no we will do him I've decided now <laughs> I've started now That's fine. Again, don't overthink certain bits of this because you'll be here forever and a day pulling yourself to pieces over this going, oh, what about this bit and this bit? And actually, you can see from it, it's the overall picture on this rather than just anything sort of specifically individual. It's everything. I'm going to make his wings a bit brighter. There we go. That's better. Sort of vanished into the background a little bit and brighten him up a bit. I don't think we need to do the same with the lion. I think he's actually, we'll go over him anyway, but he seemed to, to not disappear, did he? Likewise, this bit picked up well. So some bits did and some bits didn't. It's just sometimes just the way it is. Um, right, are we there? I think we're not far off finishing here, are we? I think we might be almost at the end of this. I'll just put that in there and there. There's a swipe of black in there. If you put a piece of black in the wrong place, honestly, no one's going to notice. Look at it. I mean, they just won't. So... Do not worry about this when you're doing it. Just follow it along as best as you possibly can. And if you put a bit in the wrong place, well, so what? Doesn't matter, does it? No one's going to know. Except you. There we go. Looking at it, I think that may be it. I could sit here and fiddle around with this for hours on end, but I think that is pretty much it. So it's taken me an hour and 10 minutes, which is exactly the same amount of time as it took me to do the last one. So there we go. We'll put it in position so you can see it. So when you look at it, you don't just look at one thing. You look at it across the whole board as a crest. So when you look at a crest or a, um, anything like that, you don't particularly go for one thing do you so I've just spotted a black line I've missed of course I have there we go that one needs a black line and there's a little bit of black there there we go that's better um see what I mean <laughs> you could keep coming back to this and you can keep seeing different things um that you've missed or you haven't missed or put a bit more paste in a bit more paint in this place whatever it doesn't matter um it's the overall effect with it um, is what you're looking for here and I say this is the second one I've painted um, I've done the first one as a trial run to see how that went but I'm happy now with this is done I'm very happy now that I've completed the live I can tell you uh, what do you think do you think it's worth doing do you think it's something that it would look very nice on a cake it would take you a long time to paint a lot of cookies with this particular pattern I think but to go on a cake I think it would be a very nice thing to put on there so this is part of the Harry Potter cookie cutter set so let me bring this on here so you can see it again so this one is this particular one here so that's the one i've done tonight just in case you're trying to find a reference to what on earth i've been doing this is the cookie cutter that's this part here and i've cut this out on white sugar paste i've embossed it with this on here 
and then I have sat and painted it with cocoa butter paints, which is what I showed you set up at the start. So if you've missed the start of it, then go back to the beginning when the live is finished and it will also be available on YouTube and you will be able to see all of the bits and pieces that are on there and how I've done it. So it is fairly straightforward. It's not too complicated. It's just time consuming so if you are going to do it you're not going to get this done in half an hour you are it is going to take you probably a couple of hours to sit and do it but that's not a bad couple of hours spent let's put it another way you could do one of these and watch a harry potter film at the same time and as you start you should finish the film at the same time unless it's one of the longer ones but you should near enough finish it at the same time so maybe that's something to do there's lots of harry potters running on itv at the moment isn't there so that's something you could sit and do um, in the dark evening so there we go so that is the crest painted from the new harry potter cookie cutters right okay so that is available on the website i'm going to put where is it that one i'm going to put that address up there at the moment so you can see that so let's shop kate live is where all the harry potter stuff is which includes i did run through it at the start so we've got hedwig and the train have now arrived so these have arrived as well so we've got Hedwig and we've got a Hogwarts Express, which we didn't have last week. We've also got the um, Hogwarts itself. There we go. And we have got the embossing mat. There are all sorts of things. There are eight of these in total that we have in stock. Um, the order has arrived today. The last time we did this, they all shot out very, very quickly. This is our second consignment coming in of Harry Potter stuff. So if you do want to get any of it, please let us know as soon as possible. Please bear in mind as well that the post is very, very busy at the moment. So it's taking a good week for most of the stuff to get through. But we are sending stuff out as fast as the orders are coming in. We're sending it straight back out. We have this stuff here ready to go. So if you do want to order it, let's shop kate.live.co.uk is where you need to go and you will find that plus all our other Christmas stuff on there as well. And we've been doing Christmas jumpers, we've been doing snow globes, we've been doing letters to Santa, we've been doing all sorts of different bits and pieces on there. And if you've missed any of that stuff, then you can go across to my other Facebook page, which is Let's Shop Kate Live. Um, and you will see on there a live from Saturday that you can watch back um, of demonstrating some of the other bits and pieces that I sell on there. So my next live is on Saturday and it's the earlier time of 9.30. So if you are planning to watch me on Saturday, we are going live at 9.30. I have already put a little post up there. Don't forget if you click going or interested, then Facebook will remind you, very important, um, rather than you having to remember. Um, if you click going or interested, Facebook will send you a notification to say, Tracy Mann's just gone live um and then you can choose whether or not to watch it you can of course watch all of our lives back so you don't have to watch them as i do them you can go back and watch them once they're finished and they do stay and remain on the facebook pages but also on youtube as well so i will share this live across to let shop shortly so that people can see it on there but you will also find um, that you'll be able to pick it up on youtube um, if you go into the live section on there, you will see that. We also stream Let's Shop Kate live out of YouTube as well. So again, you have two different places that you can actually watch our lives going. So the next live is Saturday at 10, uh, sorry, 9.30. You will see me popping up on Instagram a lot at the moment. You're going to see um, every other day I've been doing Instagram lives at the moment on, um, oh, yeah, on my at Tracy Man Kate's page. Um, so those are now in progress. You'll see those appear. I am going to do another another paint next Tuesday night. Um, it probably will be from the Harry Potter range. I suspect it will be a couple of them. So it might be the train and Hogwarts or something along those lines. But I just need to decide which two it's going to be. And then I will paint those again probably next Tuesday evening. But again, a post will go up. And just remember that if you do want to join it, just click going or interested and Facebook will remind you so that you've got track of what events you are interested in looking at um, so I hope you've enjoyed your evening for some of you that haven't seen me before we do have an online teaching school I teach cake painting I've got to find it now they've got to get my glasses going here <laughs> there it is so i do have an online painting school so if you do want to join me and you want to do some more painting then go across to this website that's coming up on the screen at the moment this is our school website that's where i teach all my classes um, and i teach mainly cake painting but i also do teach cupcake bouquet
bouquets and various other bits and pieces as well. We have got a beginner's cake painting challenge starting on the 1st of January. So if you want to join us for that between the 1st of January and the 14th of February, we always have our annual painting challenge for the beginners um, doing our beginners cocoa butter painting projects. Do all four and you can get yourself a very nice certificate. It's a great piece of motivation to start the new year because sometimes in the new year when it's January and it's dark and it's not the best month of the year, unless you have a birthday, of course, in that case, it's fabulous. Um, then <laughs> uh, we can do something in January to keep you all motivated and find things to do in the dark nights where it's not very nice. Sit and do some lovely painting. It is amazing, actually, how involved you can get with painting without realising it. You're in the zone, you're painting away. When we found at Cake International, we sat people down and said, listen, come over here and try a bit of cake painting. They were just completely painting away and not realising what was happening in the time, looked up and went, God, I love that, because you cannot do anything else while you're painting. You cannot be on your phone. You might have the television going in the background or some music, but you can't be on your phone. You can literally just sit there and paint. It's a very nice thing to do. So if you do want to have a go at it, then do please get in touch with the Cake School, which, of course, you can buy our classes or you can, of course, sign up for monthly membership. And we have four or five different levels of membership you can sign up for or maybe even get yourself a gift voucher for Christmas for either this uh, for the cake school or for Let Shop Cake Live as well. And we do have vouchers that we can provide for you as well. In any amount, you just send us an email um, or you can buy the ones that are online and we will send those to you. And then you have to print them and send them to whoever you want to send them to. So there's another option there for Christmas. So I will see everybody again on Let Shop Cake Live Facebook page on Saturday at the earlier time of 9.30. I will put another reminder up for those. Expect to see me at 10 um, it will be 9 30 this week um, i hope you all have a really nice evening thank you for joining me um, don't forget to go and have a look at the harry potter cookie cutters they will find those on let's shop cake live pop over there and have a look at them uh, keep an eye on 